Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Georgia Harris. Georgia earned her bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Cambridge, where she carried out undergraduate research in the Sherman Group. She subsequently completed her master's, also at Cambridge, in the Gaunt Group, and is currently pursuing her doctoral degree there as well. And with that, I'll let you get started, Georgia. Thank you very much for joining us on the podcast. Hi, Matt. Thank you very much for the introduction and for the invitation to share my research with the Synthesis Workshop audience. Today, I'm going to talk about a project I've been working on during my PhD in the Gaunt Group, which was recently published in Organic Letters. It focuses on the asymmetric synthesis of alpha-trialkyl alpha-tertiary amines using photoredox catalysis and exploits the reactivity of the alpha-amino radical intermediate. As I'm sure you are aware, the rapid growth of photoredox catalysis in organic synthesis over the last two decades has greatly expanded the number of methods available for radical generation. However, finding a general strategy for controlling the stereochemistry of these highly reactive species remains a significant ongoing challenge. But before we think about how best to approach this challenge, first let's consider the scaffold of interest. The alpha tertiary amine motif possesses a fully substituted carbon centre adjacent to the amine nitrogen. And in alpha trialkyl alpha tertiary amines, all three of these alpha substituents are aliphatic. As you can see, many chiral alpha trialkyl alpha tertiary amines impart beneficial therapeutic effects across a range of disease areas and can be found in a variety of biologically active natural products and pharmaceuticals, making them valuable synthetic targets. In spite of this, methods for the stereoselective construction of alpha tertiary amines are limited mainly due to the challenges associated with forging the highly hindered alpha center and finding a system that can stereochemically differentiate between sterically and electronically similar alkyl groups. Traditionally, this has resulted in the construction of alpha trialkyl alpha tertiary amines either via molecular rearrangement, where the existing stereochemical information is relayed to the newly forming alpha tertiary center, or through desymmetrization of a prochiral alpha tertiary amine by remote functionalization. A more direct approach involves the asymmetric addition of nucleophiles to preformed ketamines. And whilst this has been very successful for aryl alpha tertiary amine synthesis, it is more limited when it comes to molecules with aliphatic substituents. Despite these restrictions, ketamines are attractive precursors for alpha tertiary amines, as they can be simply generated from a wide range of ketone and amine feedstocks, allowing for a general and modular approach towards the construction of alpha tertiary amines. More recently, it has been shown that ketamines can be used to generate alpha amino radicals via photoredox mediated single electron reduction. These intermediates have seen great utility in the construction of alpha tertiary amines, but are difficult to control in terms of their stereochemistry. We questioned whether the incorporation of a chiral amine into the ketamine precursor could allow a transfer of chirality from the amine starting material to the alpha tertiary amine product. In 2021, our group published a multi-component method for the photoredox-mediated synthesis of alpha-trialkyl alpha-tertiary amines from benzylic amines, ketones and alkenes using an iridium-based photocatalyst under blue light irradiation. Working with Henry, a former PhD student now at AstraZeneca, and Milo, we were able to show that single electron reduction of an in-situ generated ketamine generated an alkyl alpha-amino radical which could then undergo radical addition into an alkene to form the alpha tertiary center. The subsequently generated radical then underwent 1,5 hydrogen atom transfer to form a highly stabilized benzylic radical, which could be oxidized to close the redox neutral cycle. Following this work, I observed that by exchanging benzylamine for alpha methyl benzylamine and thereby introducing a chiral center, a low level of stereo induction was observed in the alpha tertiary amine products. By considering the high degree of conformational flexibility in the expected transition state, it becomes clear why the induction is so low. So we considered how to rigidify the chiral centre in order to allow for a more efficient transfer of stereochemical information. It has been shown that the NH proton of an alpha amino radical is more acidic than that of the corresponding amine. So we wondered whether we could take advantage of this increased acidity to form a hydrogen bond and limit the rotation of the chiral amine. The phenyl glycinol scaffold was identified as a promising starting point for our chiral amine transfer reagent due to the presence of the Lewis basic oxygen, which should be capable of acting as an intramolecular hydrogen bond acceptor and so lock the conformation. DFT calculations performed on a model system were also consistent with the presence of an intramolecular hydrogen bond in the lowest energy transition state identified for the enantiodetermining step. So working alongside Aaron, a former postdoc in our lab who has recently begun his independent career at the University of Manchester, 
we prepared a variety of sterically and electronically varied phenylglycinol derivatives to test under our standard reaction conditions. We found immediately that the methoxyphenylglycinol initially identified was able to give rise to product formation in good yield and stereoselectivity. Exchanging the methyl for a benzyl protecting group gave a negligible effect. Substituting the aryl group along a linear exit vector at the para position likewise had no effect on the selectivity. However, substituting at the meta positions gave a substantial increase in selectivity, albeit accompanied by a drop in yield. Extending the chain length of the chiral amine transfer reagent so that a six membered hydrogen bonded ring could form rather than a five membered ring saw a drop in both yield and selectivity. And as we expected based on our hypothesis, replacing the methoxy for a methyl, removing the Lewis basic site, sees a fall in selectivity. When selecting a suitable reagent to take forward, we considered both performance in the reaction and availability of our chiral amine transfer reagent. Ultimately, selecting methoxyphenylglycinol, a commercially available reagent, which gave rise to products in good yields and selectivity. Other derivatives could also be readily accessed from their amino acids via simple reduction and protection. And here you can see the formation of borane reducing agent from sodium borohydride and iodine used in the synthesis of this paramethoxy derivative. Having selected methoxyphenylglycinol as our chiral amine transfer reagent, we explored the scope of our two-step one-pot reaction. After condensation to form the required ketamine, photocatalyst and alkene were added and the reaction irradiated with blue light. And the bright yellow glow you can see in the images is from the fluorescing photocatalyst. Here you can see a variety of alpha methyl ketones with a range of functionality could be successfully introduced, including cyclobutanes, piperidines and indanes. X-ray crystallography of a 4-nitrobenzoyl protected product confirmed the absolute stereochemistry of the major enantiomer, and this was in agreement with the predictions made by our stereochemical model. In terms of acceptors, a diverse range of electron-deficient alkenes were shown to be suitable coupling partners, including vinyl sulfonamides carrying pharmaceutically relevant payloads. We were also able to demonstrate product derivatization to access enantiomer-enriched pyrrolidines via subsequent lactamization and reduction with complete stereochemical retention at the alpha center. Based on the extensive mechanistic studies carried out on the racemic transformation, we propose the following photocatalytic cycle. First, single electron reduction of a ketaminium generates the alpha amino radical. This then undergoes 1,2 addition into an alkene, and the resultant radical is translocated via 1,5 hydrogen atom transfer to the benzylic position. A final oxidation closes the cycle. If you are familiar with photoredox catalysis, you may have spotted that the oxidation states of the catalyst indicate that an initiation cycle is required to transform the excited iridium-3 to iridium-2. We believe this occurs via the single electron oxidation of the ketamine's enamine tautomer. This also sees the formation of an amine radical cation, which acts as a catalytic acid to protonate the ketamine. In this cycle, we can see that the alpha amino radical addition is the enantiodetermining step. And as previously mentioned, the chiral amine transfer reagent we have identified takes advantage of key features of the radical, such as the acidity of the NH bond, in order to control the stereochemistry at this point. If we want to control the stereoselectivity at a different position though, we need to rethink our reagent design. For example, if we wish to use a 1,1 disubstituted alkene as an acceptor, 1,5 hydrogen atom transfer now becomes an antiodetermining, setting the gamma rather than alpha stereocenter. Performing an experiment with a symmetrical ketone and otherwise unchanged reaction conditions, we identified a naphthol-derived amine as a suitable chiral amine transfer reagent. Selectivity observed with this reagent can be rationalised by considering the minimisation of 1,3 diaxial interactions in the six-membered chair-like transition state. In summary, we have identified a commercially available chiral building block as a suitable chiral amine transfer reagent for the synthesis of enantioenriched alpha trialkyl alpha tertiary amines. We propose that selectivity is achieved via the presence of an intramolecular hydrogen bond present in the transition state, which locks the chiral information and controls facial selectivity at the point of radical addition. This model is further supported by DFT calculations. That just leaves me with a few thank yous. Thanks to the Gaunt Group and the Chemistry Department, and in particular to Matt and Aaron for their support with this project. Thank you to my industrial supervisor, Jen, and to AstraZeneca and the UKRI for funding. And finally, thank you for watching, and if you want to read more about the project, please check out the paper online. Thank you. Bye. 
Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Georgia for sharing your work with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.